This is a Louis T. Network exclusive. Louis T, welcome. You are in the lab and of course, I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me on the 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 Series. Your guide to some of the biggest and hottest names of the 2016 NFL Draft. We're talking edge pass rushers. Now we're moved on from the quarterback position to probably what is the next biggest position of need for most teams in the league, edge pass rusher. You can't have enough pass rushers on your football team this league is all about quarterbacks and the ability to stop quarterbacks. And the way you do that is with guys that can get to the quarterback. We saw how impactful guys that can get to the quarterback are in the Super Bowl. You cannot understate how big it is to be able to get to the quarterback. So we're going to talk about a guy that I think is going to come off the board extremely high in this draft. And when you've got a guy that we're talking about potentially as the number one overall pick, number two, number three overall, you know it's a guy that can impact the game. I'm talking about defensive end out of the Ohio State University, Joey Bosa. Let's jump into Joey Bosa and talk about his pros, his cons, and why this guy could potentially come off the board as early as the first overall selection in the 2016 NFL Draft. You start with this size, tremendous size at 6'5", 275. He's a very big figure and a big guy that can stand up at the point of attack, can uh, help you in the run game, can get to the quarterback. We'll talk about all those things, but his size, to me, is something that stands out. And again, when you're talking about guys that are on the defensive line that can stand up with their um, in the two-point stance and be an outside linebacker that can slide in the defensive tackle, can be versatile, size is always something that helps when you're talking about that. And Joey Bosa has that at 6'5", 275. Toughness. There's a guy that Played injured just about all 2015. He was dealing with ankle injuries and, and different problems uh, with his foot, and uh, he gutted it out. You, you watch him in the 2013 Orange Bowl versus Clemson, uh, gets his ankle rolled up on in that football game. You can tell he went from about 65% or excuse me, 85% to about 60% just by having his ankle rolled up on. And he, he didn't come out of the game, he, he stuck it out. And he, he was still giving maximum effort and actually had two sacks after he had his ankle rolled up on. So this is a tough guy we're talking about here in Joey Boza. But when you're talking about a guy that could be potentially at the top of the draft, and even if he doesn't go first, could go second, could go, could go third, fourth, fifth, you're going to talk about a lot of elite traits. And that's what Joey Boza has. Elite hand usage is one of the first pros that you come to when you start using the word elite. His hand usage, second to none in this draft, and... I talk to people all the time about you don't have to be the most explosive guys, especially as a pass rusher. It's about technique more so than anything else. Look, explosion helps, okay? The most dynamic pass rushers we have in the league, they're all explosive, okay? Whether it's J.J. Watt, whether it's Justin Houston, whether it's Von Miller, all of our best pass rushers in this league are explosive pass rushers, but they also do a great job of using their hands as well. And to me, if you give me a guy that knows how to use his hands, his game will translate well into his latter stages of his career because he knows how to get to the quarterback, whether it be using hands to get to the inside, using hands to get to the outside, pulling, pushing a guy into the direction that he wants them. It all helps stopping a run, getting to the quarterback. Hand usage to me is one of the things that we don't talk about enough but it's, from a technique standpoint, one of the biggest advantages a defensive lineman can have is hand usage. That's why some of these teams bring in karate masters and things of that nature because they want guys to be violent and very smart and savvy with their hands. And I think Joey Boza does exactly that. And, and to me, one of his biggest traits is his hand usage. Another elite trait for him, quickness. There are times where off the snap, Joey Boza, and I'll go ahead and lump this in with another pro. Uh, elite quickness and he rushes with a plane okay he's a guy that you can tell pre-snap he's already thinking all right this is what i'm going to do on this snap all right and, and so he'll come quick swim move right off the snap boom they snap the football quick swim move inside hand usage to, 
Smack the hands down. He's already in the backfield two yards. Running back doesn't stand a chance. Quarterback doesn't stand a chance. You see that on tape with Joey Bosa on numerous occasions where right off the snap, it's something quick. It's something efficient. The hand usage is there, and he's winning already. Before you can even really get a chance to settle into your stance and get your hands on him, he's already beating you because it's quick and the hand usage to make sure that anything that was left there, I'm going to go ahead and put that to rest right now and get by the tackle, get by the guard, get by the center, and get into the backfield. And so elite quickness, elite hand usage, you put those two things together and you have a guy that is very disruptive and in the opposing team's backfield on a consistent basis. He's got a mean streak. That's the next quote. Here's a guy that <laughs> you see him on plays and sometimes it's unnecessary. I can see him at the next level getting a flag or two for this, but they generally don't throw the flag for a little bit of extracurricular activity in terms of locking up with a guy who's trying to block you and you pushing him three, four yards into a pile. Generally, they don't give you penalties for that, but he's a guy that when he tackles you, he throws your leg. You know, and is that necessary? No. Okay, but he's got a little bit of a mean streak in him. And as a defensive player, sometimes you need that. Not all the time, but defensive players by nature are aggressive normally. And so he's a very aggressive guy that has a mean streak in him that will block a guy three yards out of the play again. He's not an offensive lineman, so you don't really want him blocking a guy out of the play. But it's just a, a little bit of a nasty streak that sometimes you want to see in your guys to know that they have that dog in them. So uh, you see it with Joey Bowles that he has that in him as well. Start at the point of attack. And I kind of alluded to this earlier, but let's go ahead and lump these two pros together. Start at the point of attack and brute strength. Uh, he's so start at the point of attack. He uses his hands well. I've already mentioned that. But he does a really good job of standing guys up and not really giving ground and getting to the ball carrier, whether he stacks his sheds, and that's another pro, so I'll go ahead and throw that in here as well while I'm on the subject matter. He'll stack and shed a guy, so he'll stand him up at the point of attack, won't give any ground, and as soon as the ball carrier comes, he'll discard them and get to the ball carrier. Now, there are some things that he can work on and be better at once he discards those guys. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but he, he does a really good job of standing up offensive linemen and not giving ground. And, and that brute strength comes into play when we're talking about bull rushing. He, he's a guy that, <laughs> his bull rush is outstanding. You know, he, he's a guy that will give you a bevy of moves, and that's another pro for him, is that he's not a one-trick pony. Uh, the quickness and the hand usage sets up different moves, so you really don't know what you're getting from snap to snap. And just when you think, okay, he's gonna try to beat me inside with a quick swim move or a rip move to the outside, he comes with the bull rush and puts guys on skates. And it's phenomenal to watch Joey Bosa with a, just a beautiful uh, bull rush where he gets up under the pads of a tackle and just drives them five, six yards at a time into the backfield. Now he may not make a sack, he may not make the play, but because of that pressure, he'll flush the quarterback. And you know, Ohio State had all that speed on defense, whether it was Darren Lee or one of these other guys, to fly around and clean up the mess. So uh, it, it, sometimes you can't go off of the numbers as to what an impact a guy had on a football game. And Joey Bolson sometimes is that type of player. Versatility, okay? Here's a guy that can play defensive end, defensive tackle, and I think at the next level could even go as an outside linebacker. He didn't line up in that particular position a lot at Ohio State, but that's something that I think some teams will consider with Joey Boza at the next level because I think he can be one of those guys that not necessarily is going to light up the uh, stat sheet with a bunch of sacks, but he will be that strong side uh, linebacker, outside linebacker that can set the edge in the run game that you just can't run to his side. And uh, I think sometimes we don't give enough credit to that strong side outside linebacker in a 3-4 defense because we're always talking about the guy that's rushing the quarterback, the guy that can get up the field and create havoc. But what about the guy that can just set the edge in the run game and make sure that there's no running coming to this side of the football field? And then occasionally get pressure on the quarterback as well. I think Joey Bozer could also be that for a team if they're looking for him to do that as well. So that, I think that's part of the reason why at the top of the draft, he's so appealing is because there's so many different things you can do with Joey Boza because of his size of 6'5", 275. If he puts on a few more pounds, 
You could slide him in at defensive tackle. I doubt that very seriously, but that's something that teams are probably discussing internally. And on third down and nickel packages, sure, you can slide him inside to add an extra rusher at a different position. So he gives you the versatility that you're looking for. And I think that's part of the reason why we're talking about Joey Bolzer as a potential number one overall draft pick, but a guy that probably won't be on the board when you get to the fifth or sixth pick in the draft. 26 career sacks. 13 and a half and 14, that number dipped to 5 and 15, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. With 51 tackles for loss in his career, 26 sacks, stellar career at Ohio State. This guy brings a lot to the table, which is why he is considered one of the best defenders in this draft. You go to his cons, however, he will jump off sides. And for a guy that lacks explosion, and we'll talk about that here in a second, you need every kind of advantage you can get. And if jumping the snap count is the it, I don't have a problem with it. I just need you to be a little bit more precise when you do it. He's a guy that will jump off sides. And I thought that his biggest offsides penalty, and I saw a bunch of them on tape, but his biggest offsides penalty may have been in that uh, game against Michigan State late in the season. They end up losing to Michigan State without Connor Cook. And it was a third and about eight. And he jumps off sides. They get a free play. They don't complete it, but it, it takes a third and eight that I don't think Michigan State was going to pick up and turns it into third and three. They use their quarterback to run the football. They end up picking up the first down. They end up going down the field and getting the game-winning score to take the lead and ultimately win that football game. It's the game that kept Ohio State out of the national championship game. And I thought they should have been there. They should have been in the Big Ten championship. They should have been in the playoffs. They should have been a team that could have been vying for a championship. We should have saw Urban Meyer and Nick Saban locking horns again. But we didn't get that because they didn't win that football game, and one of the big plays in that game was the Joey Bosa offsides penalty. So he's a guy that will jump offsides, lacks pure explosion. And to me, that's the biggest con you get from Joey Bosa is there's not a lot of explosion here with this guy. And that's why he makes up for it in so many different ways, which makes him extraordinary. That's why the hand usage is so important. That's why him being strong is so important. And, and bull rushing and getting up the field that way. That's why the quickness, and I think that to me is why he's able to get away with the lack of explosion is because the quickness and the mindset, hey, I know what I'm doing. He's rushing with a plan. Before the snap, he already knows exactly what it is he's trying to get done on his play. Now, will it work? You don't know, but at least he has a plan in place. So the explosion, it's not there. He's not a guy that's going to explode off the snap, beat you with his first step, and, and the tackle is lost because Joey Bowles is already behind him and in the backfield and going after the quarterback. It's not his game. So I think at the next level, he will struggle because you can take advantage of college tackles a lot of times and beat them with quickness and beat them with hand usage and beat them, but you need a level of explosion. You need that threat to threaten the tackle so that he opens his hips up so that you can go inside. You need the threat of, hey, I gotta watch this guy's speed because he's so dominant getting to the outside. I need to hurry up and get into my back pedal and you open those hips up and next thing you know, Joey Bose is taking a swim move inside and you've already opened up your hips outside as a tackle and he's gone. So I, I think that's gonna hurt him as a pass rusher at the next level. We'll see if he's able to circumvent that with the elite hand usage and the elite quickness. but. And that can only take you so far at the next level. You need explosiveness, and I don't think Joey Bosa possesses that necessarily. He'll run himself out of place. That's the next con. He's a guy that wants to get up the field. He wants to get to the quarterback, and in doing so, sometimes he'll run up the field. And again, I talked about the lack of explosiveness. So he doesn't get around the corner sometimes, and he'll get pushed, and he'll fall on the ground. And, and speaking of which, let's, let's lump the next con in there. Stay off the goddamn ground. He's on the ground a lot. It's Joey Bosa. For a guy as dominant as he was at Ohio State, you don't want to see him on the ground a lot. And I say this every year about guys who I feel like are on the ground too much. Stay off the ground, man. He's a guy that, he, I'm like, this isn't baseball. Too many times he rushes up the field and the tackle pushes him and he's sliding. Get off the ground. What are you sliding for? Stay on your feet. You can't make a play on your knees. You can't make a play on the seat of your pants. Stay off the ground and stay involved in the play and stay engaged. So uh, a lot of times he'll run up the field trying to get behind the tackle 
and the tackle just push them around the pocket, and all of a sudden, if it's a run, it's a draw, they're going exactly to the spot where Joey Bolza vacated because he's up the field rushing like a madman instead of sometimes being patient, seeing what's going on, and staying backside and staying at home. He's up the field, and all of a sudden, now there's a crease there for the running back and a lane to hit outside. I thought uh, Michigan State did a great job of utilizing that and using that against Joey Bolza, and sometimes you'll see that on tape where teams take advantage of his aggressiveness and run it right where he's supposed to be. And uh, sometimes I think he runs himself out of plays and he needs to stay off the ground. There's nothing good that can come of being on the ground unless you're diving for a fumble or you're bagging a quarterback and you're getting him on the ground or you're getting a ball carrier on the ground. But if you're not doing one of those things, stay off the ground. And last but not least, and this one isn't really a big deal, but anytime you get suspended, that's something that if, if I'm a coach, if I'm a general manager, if I'm an evaluator, I want to know what exactly you were suspended for. First game in 2015, he and a couple of his teammates violated some team uh, rules and was suspended for the first game of the season. I want to know what the hell happened. I want to know why it was that you were suspended. And I don't think it was a big deal. It doesn't seem like Joey Bowles is a, a, a troublemaker or a guy that gets into a lot of things off the field. But again, I can't confirm nor deny that. I don't know the guy. I don't know his situation. I just know he was suspended for one game in 2015, so uh, teams will dive, in, dive into that and delve deep into that and figure out what went wrong there, and then they'll move on from there. The guy's a talent. There's no doubt about that. I don't think he's the next J.J. Watt. You know, a lot of people have talked about that, and I, I don't think he's that because J.J. Watt is explosive. J.J. Watt does a number of things that Joey Bosa just simply can't do. I, I don't see J.J. Watt uh, being affected as much by double teams. I see that guy winning against double teams. Whereas Joey Boza, more attention was paid to him in 2015. We saw the numbers in 2014, 13 and a half sacks. That number plummeted, and you could attribute that maybe to the ankle injuries that he was dealing with all season long, but more attention was paid to him. Guys said, okay, team said, all right, Joey Boza's not beating us. And so they, they chipped him and they, they double teamed him a lot, and he wasn't able to win. As, as often as he was the year before. And that's another thing that a lot of people are talking about. But we'll, we'll see what happens with Joey Bowles. I think he's an impactful football player, a guy that can help you. We talk about the Von Mills of the world. We talk about the Justin Houstons of the world. But the Malik Jacksons of the world, <laughs> the Derek Wolfs of the world, are guys that are unsung heroes that you need on your team. I think Joey Bowles can end up being a guy like that on your football team. And to me, his, be his best value probably is going to be as a five technique in a 3-4 defense. Maybe you stand him up as an outside linebacker. I'd like to see him as a 3-4 outside linebacker, or excuse me, a 5 technique, and sticking his hand in the dirt, gaining another 5 or 10 pounds, and, and really being able to stand up at the point of attack as a 5 tech. But we'll see what happens with him. Whether he's a 4-3 defensive end or an outside linebacker in a 3-4 defense, we'll see what team drafts him and, and what their plan for Joey Boza is in the upcoming draft. That's Joey Boza and his 2016 NFL Draft Prospects 101 breakdown. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we come up all here in the lab. We'll come back and join us. I can tell you break down anything. And not everything in the National Football League. We've got more edge rushers. Come on back. We're going to break them down. Break them down. Break them down here in the NFL Draft Prospects 101 series. See you next time. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.